Hi guys, and welcome back to another TechMinds video. Now, one particular type of receive antenna that I've not tried before is the loop on the ground, which is primarily meant for frequencies less than 30 megahertz or the HF bands. It should even perform relatively well right down to 300 kilohertz. But of course, there are many factors that can affect performance. And with the size of my garden, I think I should be able to get around 30 meters of wire laid out in some sort of square laid on the ground. The wire that I'll use for this experiment will be DX10 wire, which is the wire antenna that Callum from DX Commander sells on his website for making his DX Commander antennas. To connect the ends of the wire or loop to a 50 ohm coax feed, I'll need some form of transformer. In this case, I'll use one of these. Now this is just a very cheap one-to-one -one ballon that's balance line to unbalance. Now you can most likely experiment your cells with the type of ballon used here. You can also experiment with different lengths of wire, depending on the space that you have available. But I should be able to get at least some kind of good results from this test. Now I'll terminate the ends of the wire with little brass wing nuts, just so that I can make it easier to connect to the ballon. If we were to look down on my garden from above, then this is the idea that I have for the initial test. 30 meters of wire or thereabouts just laid out on the grass and then connected to that one to one ballon on the top left of my garden. So this is how I've got it connected. As mentioned ago, I have a 50 ohm coax feed which goes off to the shack and that's then attached to this one to one ballon. And then the wires are connected to either side of the ballon on those two terminals. As you can see here, the wire starts going off along here, parallel with the end fence, then down the side fence, then parallel with the back of the house, and then back up alongside the conservatory to the other side of the ballon. Now, the first test that I performed was on the 40 meter band, and as I still had my NFID half wave antenna connected, I performed an A and B comparison. Now it should be extremely clear which antenna is which, but if you cannot guess, the NFID half wave antenna which is actually my normal daily antenna, has a much higher noise floor. So just take a look at this. Yes, of Emmett, the radio, after 50 years, I thought to uh, try that. And uh, I'm very pleased. So I like to use the computer anyway, and uh, uh, it is good to have the software available, which is always uh, improved uh, by uh, volunteers and uh, doesn't cost anything. So a lot of things uh, you have in your transceiver uh, 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 are free, you know. <laughs> so I never thought about uh, buying a new uh, a transceiver like the ones on the market these days. And of course, the case. Now, the band conditions were proper flat for 40 meters when I recorded this video, but I think it gives a general idea of how it performs. Now I performed the same test on 20 meters, still using an SDR Play RSPDX receiver. And of course I performed the A and B comparison between the end fed half wave and the loop on the ground. As we saw there, the noise floor did creep up with the end fed half wave antenna, but then again, so did the signal strength of the stations that I was receiving. Not entirely unexpected as my end fed half wave antenna is around 10 meters off the ground. Now another little test I wanted to perform was to see how well digital modes were received, specifically FTA. So I picked a band. In this case, it was a 17 meter band at 18 megahertz. And then I just left JTDX receiving and decoding some FTA transmissions. Now the purpose of this test was to see what countries I could receive using the loop on the ground. And even though the band conditions were not great, I did get some unexpected results. Now from the list here, we can see stations from Japan, Russia, Finland, UAE, Italy, Croatia, and even China, plus a whole lot more. Now, considering this is just the length of wire laying on the ground, receiving is still fairly reasonable. Now, this might be a great solution for anyone starting out and wanting to take a listen to sub 30 megahertz without having to strap wires up in the air. 
Now, one of the questions I can hear you asking is what is the SWR like across the HF bands? Well, here is the plot. Weirdly enough, it appears that the SWR is below 2 for most of the HF handbands, with most of them being lower than 1.5. Now, once I saw this, I wondered to myself, maybe I could transmit too. Now, I know perfectly well that the losses will be tremendous, roughly estimated at more than 20 dB. And that would mean for a 100 watt input, only 1 watt would be radiated. Of course, there's many factors to think about here. Soil type, wire thickness and material, plus surrounding objects, etc. But it's worth trying, right? Now the mode of choice would of course be FT8, as I can easily check PSK Reporter to see where my signal was heard. Now the 1 to 1 balloon that I'm using here was supposed to be rated for 50 watts using digital modes. However, I soon found out that over time, as it gets warmer, the SWR was creeping up. So I kind of stopped that experiment. However, I did check out the PSK Reporter website after making some contacts, and these are the results. Nothing of great interest here, but I was received in Western Russia. Now, after these tests, I changed the ballon to one which could handle a little more power. Now, this one is rated at 500 watts. If you're interested in the SWR plot for this one, it appears that it's a lot higher on each of the handbands than the previous ballon. So, for this, I did actually need to use the internal tuner on my FT710 so that I could run around 50 to 60 watts. Now I let this run for quite some time, changing bands periodically, and here are the results. Now that's not bad considering how much power is being absorbed directly into the earth. So one last test, and that was to raise the antenna a few feet above the ground. Now I wish I had enough poles to put this say 10 meters above the ground, but I managed maybe three to five feet. The point of this experiment was really to see how well loop antennas worked on the ground, so raising it slightly was just a fun test. Now we all know that the HF bands have been pretty bad over the past few weeks, especially during the day, which is when I do most of my testing. But from the results shown here, using an SDR receiver, the noise floor was considerably more just by raising the antenna a few feet off the ground. I then proceeded to make some contacts on FT8, making a few around Europe. Now I had run out of time, otherwise I would have left this running a little longer, but checking the last 15 minutes on PSK Reporter, I discovered a more concentrated number of stations that were receiving my signal. So raising it off the ground appears to work better, at least for transmit, but the noise floor does rise. Now I am wondering if I was able to put the loop up at around 10 meters off the ground, would the signals be received stronger, meaning a better to signal to noise ratio compared to when it was lower. Now just remember, this experiment was just for fun. And if you try this at home, you'll most likely get different results. But one thing for sure is that with a loop on the ground, your noise level should be lower. But then again, so will the received signals. Now if you have personally tested this yourself, or maybe use a loop on the ground all the time, let us know down in the comments the type of ballon you use and the wire lengths. I'm thinking that a lot longer loop with more wire on the ground would actually perform better. Well, better than my 30 meters of wire. Anyway guys, that's just a bit of fun. And I think I might wait until the HF bands pick themselves up again and then try this experiment again. It'd be interesting to see how well the loop on the ground works when the conditions are working really well. Of course, if you have any recommendations, then please feel free to leave them down in the comments. Again, it's nice to share information with each other so that we all learn in this great hobby. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Thank you to my Patreons, my YouTube members, all of my subscribers and viewers. It's really, really appreciated. Until the next one, take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next video.